Hi there, everybody. It's Ifti from Extreme Returns, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be analyzing Microsoft. Now, as you know, um, every listed company, any company that's got shares on any stock exchange has to release an awful lot of information. In America, they have to do it every quarter, every three months. And they have to, well, they don't have to, but they give a lot of estimates to uh, analysts as well. Um, now, Microsoft has got uh, an awful lot of history behind it. I'm not going to go into too much detail about what they do and who they are, but just point out one or two things. Uh, first of all, they're based in, uh, well, their head office is in Seattle. Uh, it, they do have offices in San Jose, which is the heart of Silicon Valley, where all the other big tech companies are, but they um, were founded in Seattle. That's where Bill Gates lives. Uh, the other thing is that they have gone a lot into the cloud to challenge Amazon. Their system is called Azure. They've got obviously the PCs, tablets, gaming. Uh, they got Windows phones as well. Um, I think they bought Nokia not too long ago. That turned out to be not as good as they wanted to. Enterprise market, which means going into helping customers, um, businesses predominantly. Okay, so... How good are Microsoft? Their market capitalization is 1.22 trillion pounds. I can't imagine that kind of money. Uh, they closed at just under $219 per share. And the quality of the company in terms of the financial metrics is 99. Now remember, um, accountants and analysts look at quality in a number of ways. First of all, we look at return on capital employed. Now I've spoken about this a number of times. ROCE or ROC means how well the company is investing uh, money in order to make more money. The higher the percentage, the better. The green uh, means that <laughs> it's very, very good. Um, return on equity, I'm not going to go into in too much detail uh, because it will just confuse you. <laughs> Operating margin is one that I look at very closely. 38% is fantastic. Now, Stockopedia say operating margin is the measure of how much income a company has left over after paying its operating costs, such as rent and salaries. Basically, it's income minus the direct costs of producing a service or product. And the higher it is, the better. You can see from revenue, Microsoft has increased from just over $93 billion in 2015 to uh, the latest accounts show $143 billion. Now, remember I was saying every quarter they have to release results. Uh, so if you take the latest results, um, it's the 12-month trailing basis, as we call it. The last 12 months of available numbers show revenues increasing to $147 billion. The analyst the, the estimates they've given out to the analysts is that next year 158 billion and the year after that 175. So it's growing really fast. CAGR means compound annual growth rate. Uh, so if you take the average growth rate every year, it's just under 9%, which for a company that's got 1.2 trillion pounds, it's amazing. It's still growing very fast. Operating profit. So um, remember, we spoke about operating margin. So you calculate operating profit by um, taking total revenue minus operating costs, and you've got operating profit is 24%. And net profit, so you take further costs, which th those which are indirect to producing um, the service, uh, and you're left with. Uh, Latest account show 44 billion. Now look at the look at how it's increased 12, 20, 25, dipped to 16. I think that's where they took the hit on some of their uh, their divisions and companies which they'd bought that hadn't performed so well, such as Nokia. I may be wrong, but I think that's what happened. But look at that after that. So having sold off loss making products and services or written them off. Um, now their profits more than doubled and they were much higher than before. 39 billion, 44 billion, 47. They've got some big contracts, especially in the cloud, that's making them a huge amount of money and they're continuing to grow. 
Now, importantly, if you look at the compad annual growth rate, it's 29%, whereas the revenue is growing at less than 9%. What that says is that obviously their net profit is growing at a faster rate than their revenues are, which means for every $1 of revenue they're bringing, well, put it this way, for every $9 of revenue they're bringing in, they're bringing in 29, um, the, the percentage is three times, 8, 20, 8, 16, 24, nearly four times greater than the previous profit level. So to break it down, if they're earning, say, um, uh, 1% profit, it's 4% in terms of the amount which they're bringing in. It's four times greater. All right, now let's look at value. Now, value simply means um, it's exactly that. Is it good value? The best ratio we use is PE ratio, which means price to earnings ratio. I've explained this a number of times, but uh, it's really price per share divided by earnings per share, which means that um, the higher the PE ratio, the more expensive the stock. 30 for a US tech company nowadays is not bad. The price earnings growth ratio we won't go into, but it takes into account future, whereas the PE ratio is historical. Anything less than one is really good. And earnings per growth, we're not going to go into, uh, but dividend yield we will. So Microsoft is one of those rare examples in the US stock sector that does give a dividend, and it has been for a number of years. So if you look at this bit here, it's been giving uh, dividends for many, many years. And uh, you can tell in terms of value, Microsoft is 23. If you look at the value uh, results as we have now, um, a lot of them are not in green, which means it's slightly overpriced. Now looking at the share price pre-pandemic levels, take February hit 187, it's clearly recovered, went all the way down to 137. So anybody who bought at that level, uh, especially if you see it went right up to 227 and it's been going sideways since. But interestingly, if you look over the last five years, in fact, look even further beyond, beyond um, all the way back in 2001, look at this, hasn't really, it's been going sideways for years and years and years. Microsoft was known as a stock that went nowhere. And you can see for 10, 12, 13 years, I mean, they've had stock splits and they have gone up and they have been paying dividends. So don't get me wrong. But if you look uh, from around here, 2017, to where it is now, in the last two, three years, it has grown exponentially. And one of the reasons for that is that it's reinvented itself or gone more into uh, the cloud uh, servers, um, taking on Amazon, uh, AWS Amazon Web Services, which is the most profitable part of Amazon. Uh, in terms of momentum, moving on, is 73. Now, what does that mean? 73 means momentum. Here are all the different indicators we use, or the main ones, actually. Relative strength, so it's underperforming the marketplace on the one and three and six month basis. Not by much, to be fair. On a one year basis, it's outperforming the marketplace. You can see the volume going down recently. Um, that's why the momentum is only 73. You can see yeah, it's minus six over the last 30 trading days. Uh, Moving averages, it's still ahead of its last 50-day average, well ahead of its last 200-day average. So it still does have some momentum behind it. Now, other things that we should mention about it, they're sitting on a huge cash pile, which is actually quite static in terms of the last three, four years, 132 here, 133, 133, 136, 138. Um, Dividend, very good, very safe. Um, dividends per share has been at 1.21. So they've been increasing it at a rate of 10.5% compounded annually, which is very good. Uh, dividend growth, you can see broken down in a bit more detail here. So well above the rate of inflation. And they're able to cover their dividend. Dividend cover just means how many times uh, a company is able to afford their dividend uh, quite easily. Uh, in this case, 
what else can we say? Let's have a look at, to see. Uh, one thing I always wanted to see is how much Bill Gates has still got left in terms of uh, the biggest shareholders. He's no longer even in the top 10. Now that does surprise me. It's all the big uh, investment fund managers who have got holdings there in terms of what's in the news in, uh, in for Microsoft recently. Microsoft is designing its own chips for servers. I think they're going into AI and robot robotics as well. Um, and that will be the next big thing because Bill Gates has spoken about it, although he's not, no longer actively managing the company. Uh, looking at, what else can we look at? Um, balance sheet, is there anything interesting on here? Uh, is there any debt here? Um, long-term debt, quite a lot of long-term debt, 60 billion. That surprises me. If you're sitting on a big cash pile, why would you have so much debt long term? Probably at a very good rate. Okay, so that is Microsoft. I hope you've learned something about it. Um, I've got this in my own portfolio because I think it's one of what, what I call an anchor stock. I think most people should have plenty of anchor stocks. At least a third of the portfolio should be um, safe, uh, rock solid companies that are going to perform well. They're not racy, although this is a software sector, but they're not in danger either. If you look at the health trend, for example, what they call the F score, it's an eight out of nine. And they go through, <laughs> I'm not going to go into in any in, in a great deal of uh, detail. It's a an academic called Piotr Trotsky. Now, very famous guy. He developed um, this health check and Microsoft have ticked eight out of the nine. Um, and it's low manipulation risk. Again, this is another academic this time. It's a guy called uh, Benish, professor, and bankruptcy score as well. Very safe company. Thank you, everybody, for listening to this. Let's see you at the next um, recording.